people just can't say no to a free gift, even if it's something that they completely have zero use for. We know that. You know, we've been hearing a lot about cybersecurity lately. President Obama has unveiled a number of new proposals this week, and it's great that the government is working on this, but the truth of the matter is, we need to do a better job of protecting ourselves. We're talking about cybersecurity today and how safe people's passwords are. What is one of your online passwords currently? It is my dog's name and the year I graduated from high school. Oh, what kind of dog do you have? I have a Chihuahua Papillon. And what's its name? Jameson. So notice what the interviewer did here. Basically, he didn't ask her, give me, my, give me your password. He asked her for specific details, so he explained to me what's the convention of your password, which is something, okay, I don't mind telling you how I build my passwords, and then asking all sorts of personal questions. Oh, what kind of dog do you have? Oh, where did you go to school? Oh, when did you graduate? Oh, did you know this one? Oh, wow. And where did you go to school? Um, I went to school back in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. What school? Uh, Hempfield Area Senior High School. Oh, when did you graduate? In 2009. Well, that, that's actually amazing. I, I love this video because it shows how easy it is to manipulate people with social engineering. People think that social engineers or hackers go around with that black hoodie and they're evil people. No, usually they're people with high social skills that with a nice smile and a nice story can get basically into anywhere. I have been doing social engineering for over 20 years. I'm sure that someone who will invest enough time and energy in crafting the right story will manage to manipulate me because it's human nature. Today, for example, with the rise of AI, it's very easy to find a sample of my voice, even with this video, create a whole new AI persona and call my husband or call my kids or call my father or whatever and pretend to be me. And that would be very easy. Hi, this is Mae Brooks. This surprisingly real AI voice was made with astonishingly little effort or oversight. It took just a minute's worth of training audio, two USD and about five minutes of work. So what I teach my kids about it, my kids, my friends, everyone, is to ask a personal question that no one else will know, or even if they will know, they will have to look for it. Hello. Hi. I haven't seen you here before. I'm Klaus Hergesheimer. Ah, uh, new here. Oh, I've been here three years. G-section. Oh, how are things in G-section? <clears throat> Tailgating like we saw here is easy. I pretend to walk behind someone. I didn't ask for him hold the door so he doesn't even realize that he held the door for someone who's not allowed in because he pretended to have a card and he put his back in a way that the employee who was actually allowed in couldn't see what he was doing. And he makes Klaus, the actual employee, feel bad because I haven't seen you here before. He looks very confident. He looks the part. He comes with a nice suit with a lot of self-confident and again social engineering is all about playing the part same old grind you know checking radiation shields for replacement hey by the way where's yours uh i've been waiting a couple of days for you guys to deliver them oh gee i'm sorry you should have given us a phone call uh, yeah look i got one here lucky for you i carry spares now you keep that on you can't be too careful about radiation <laughs> absolutely who are you? What do you want? Uh, Klaus Hergesheimer, G-section. Just uh, checking on radiation. So he took exactly what he just heard from the actual employee. It's, it's ingenious. At the end of the day, it's just looking at who's in front of you and trying to understand what sort of emotion can trigger them. And everyone has witnessed this. First, she's looking at the directory and trying to understand who works for the company and who might be of interest. And that's actually really easy. You don't need a sophisticated employee directory. You just go on LinkedIn, go to the company that you're looking at, and that's it. Next, you start looking at different people and try and find their interests. And if someone is 
very let's call it obsessed with his dog that will be there or if someone is a runner that will be there and unfortunately today most people and most companies don't understand that risk and it's not just about your personal data when i see want want ads that are saying i'm looking for a security practitioner with experience with sentinel one checkpoint and palo alto you just gave a potential intruder which technologies you use in your platform. Why not say, I want someone who has experience with ETRs, firewalls, and DLPs. Hackers do their homework. They won't necessarily target higher profiles than we would expect. They wouldn't go for the CEO. They will go for the CEO's secretary because she is privy to so much personal and professional data that could be very lucrative. People don't sus suspect something that is very personal. They won't suspect something like this. They would suspect something that looks like an email coming from the IT department or something that comes from a financial institution. They wouldn't suspect something that comes from a dog show or a race or a promotion on a new t-shirt or something like that. They just don't think that way. And that's where the problem starts. For example, before Black Friday, we see an increased amount of scams that are giving special promotions, special offers, because we all expect to get special deals around Black Friday. About a couple of days after Black Friday, we see a shift, and that shift is that most scams then will be track your order, your order is on the way, if there's a problem with your shipment, things like that, because everyone orders online during Black Friday, so everyone is expecting a shipment. If it seems too good to be true, usually it is. It's absolutely phenomenal because so many security awareness programs, so many, but people neglect the human factor. People forget that it's all about human nature. And when we see a freebie, we have to pick it up. We see a discount key lying around, we pick it up, we stick it in the computer just because we want to make sure that we have it and we can use it and whatever. People can't, people just can't say no to a free gift, even if it's something that they completely have zero use for. In this case, a flash drive. At the time, it used to be floppy disks. People used to leave floppy disks laying around. Sometimes we would post something on them. Today, it could also be um, phishing emails with attachments, things like that. People are curious. Curiosity is one of the basic traits of humans. If you're looking at things like Stuxnet or even what just happened in Lebanon with the beepers, obviously, it wasn't something that was planned two days before. Things like that are being planned for years. Oh, okay. shit, shit, shit. In total, between 85 and 95% of all successful incidents, security incidents, involve the human factor in some way. A lot of companies give that one annual awareness training and that's it, and they hope that that will last. And a lot of companies and a lot of people assume that because people are in tech, they understand cybersecurity, or because people are young, they understand cybersecurity because they've been using it all their life. No, they've been using the internet and actually young people are even more prone and techies are specifically prone because what they know, they know, but the problem is they are overconfident in many cases and they don't actually understand cybersecurity the way that we do as professionals. Security, uh, Norm. Norm is speaking. Norman, this is Mr. Eddie Vedder from Accounting. I just had a power surge here at home that wiped out a file I was working on. Listen, I'm in big trouble. You know anything about computers? Um, my BLT drive on my computer just went AWOL, and uh, I got this big project due tomorrow for Mr. Kawasaki, and if I don't get it in, he's gonna ask me to commit Harry Carey. Could you, uh, read me the number on the modem? Um... It's fantastic. Number one, he's talking all sorts of 
tech mumbo jumbo terms that are not even real because he knows that the person on the other side has no idea what he's doing. And that's actually something we see a lot of people saying about medical professionals. The other thing he's doing here is asking for help. You have to help me. You know that my computer just crashed and you know what he'll do to me and you know what this management is like and it's two minutes out of your time. And please, please, please help me. And most people are good people. If you ask me for help, I will probably say, okay, sure, I can help you. And then we'd lower our guards. Have you ever won anything major before? No, never. Well, you have now. Oh my God. The government is going to make you pay a tax on the prize, oh. but if you buy the Waterson 2000 water filtration system, the prize gets recorded as a sales expense and you don't pay any tax. Oh, stores. You want to what? Mrs. Fisk, yeah. my associate tells me you have five grandkids? Wow. Now, I understand that you'd like to speak to your husband first about this, and I can understand why, but the thing is, Irene, my secretary's having a baby this afternoon, and everyone here at the office is about to bug out and head over to the hospital. <laughs> now, let me confirm your address so I... Uh, it's fantastic because, again, they're using her emotions against her. She's a mother of... F she has five grandkids, so obviously she'll be very excited about the secretary having a baby and everyone wanted to play part and the reason they're using this pretext is to get her to do something now in most cases most social engineering would not be successful if people just pause think review look for the warning signs and then make a decision however that's not the way it works with social engineering they do things to manipulate us they use urgency to get us to do something now by the way it's not just social engineers can you help me? My presentation got stained. Any chance can you print me a new copy, please? You're not supposed to. Again, asking for help. Help always works. If you start talking to someone and you're asking for his help in anything, in most cases, they'll help you. But what people forget is that when they help you, they, always, uh, they also expose a lot of information. We always forget about the human side and the physical security side. At the end of the day, we can put all the technology we want around the tech stuff, but if someone just inserts a disk on key and no one blocked it, game over. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to see more content like this, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you're curious about cybersecurity, you can check out my book, Scams, Hacking, and Cybersecurity, the ultimate guide to protecting your privacy from the link in the description below. See you in the next video.